Having trouble winning games in Madden 25? Whether you're struggling on offense See ya. or struggling on defense, what the hell is that? This is the video for you. So if you guys want to see 15 tips, tricks, and cheats for better offense and defense in Madden 25, stick around after the intro. If you guys are looking for fast, cheap, reliable muck coins, check out my sponsor at MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. The champ is here! Welcome back, Money Team. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys 15 tips, tricks, and cheats for better offense, defense, and special teams. But before I do, if you guys want to see more videos like this, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. And if you need more help with more money plays, I already have two ebooks out, The Chiefs Offense and Defense, and you can download them instantly simply by clicking the links in the description or the top hand comment. For my first tip, if you're struggling with the new accuracy meter for field goals there's a better way to do this simply by editing your settings and changing your kick meter style to classic madden meter and tap and tap and this will change it back to the old kicking style in madden where you don't have to time the meter at the bottom you could simply just tap and tap and it's right back to the old way that it used to be making it much easier to kick accurate field goals Next up, I'm gonna go over offense, starting with another setting that you should change in your game settings, game options, and that's your passing type. If you're still using classic, you may notice that you don't necessarily have a lot of control over where the ball goes, as you really just get whatever the computer decides to give you. So if you want more control over where your pass is going to go, you should really try changing this from classic to at the very least placement, or if you wanna to go to the most difficult, but also the most rewarding, placement and accuracy. With placement, there's not as much of a demand to time the actual throw, but you will get more control with the reticle as you have the ability to pass lead the ball anywhere inside the reticle by using the left stick. Next up, I'm gonna go over how to read a defense. And this is something that you should be doing every single play, whether you're running or passing, because if you know what type of defense your opponent is in, you'll know exactly how to attack it because every defense has strengths and weaknesses. The first thing you're gonna wanna look at when it comes to reading a defense is the outside cornerbacks. And the second thing you're gonna wanna read is gonna be the safeties. Against cover two zone, which is what I'm in now, the cornerbacks will typically be about five Five yards off the line of scrimmage and that's because they have to cover that area the starting depth that you see from these cornerbacks and these safeties are reflective to the depth drop that they have to make once the play starts so since this cornerback is going to cover low they have to start to play low and since the safeties are going to cover deep they have to start to play deep which is why they're about 15 yards off the line of scrimmage now if i switch to a cover three you'll notice that these cornerbacks drop back to about eight yards off the line of scrimmage because once again they have to drop back further and if you look at the safety he's starting at about the deepest depth you're going to see which is almost 20 yards based on the fact that he can't let any get behind him over the middle of the field and he has the largest area to cover if i switch over to cover four quarters which is a matching style concept you're going to notice that the cornerbacks don't move at all they stay at the exact same eight yard depth only this time the safeties are at a much different depth they're almost at the exact same depth as the cornerbacks and that's because they have to react to anything that goes over 10 yards so they're all pretty much starting at about eight and nine yards which is pretty much the easiest way to tell that you have a cover four match now there also are cover where one side of the defense is going to be different than the other you can see right here we have a cover two on one side and a cover four on the other side and the zone drop depths are going to reflect that as you can see the cornerback on the right side is now five yards of the line of scrimmage and the cornerback on the left side is now eight yards of the line of scrimmage so if you see these outside cornerbacks at different depths you immediately know that it's a split defensive coverage that one side is different than the other and you can basically isolate one of those sides and attack that side alone when it comes to man coverage you'll notice that the cornerbacks are going to be closer to the receiver than any other defense and that's because they're charged with pressing and trying to redirect the receiver at the line of scrimmage and this is the only defense that is like this if i switch over to a cover one hole you'll notice that we go back to the eight yard depth which is typical of the cover three. So the only way to really tell the difference between a cover three and a cover one hole is if you look at the slot cornerback, which a lot of times will change position, but this is gonna be something that you'll typically have to tell after the play starts. As you can see right there, the only real change is how that cornerback or that safety rather reacts to the tight end. And then when it comes to man blitz zero, you're going to notice that once again, everybody is within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. Next up, I'm going to go over how to read and run RPOs. You can make a pre-snap read when it comes to RPOs simply by counting how many defenders are in the box compared to how many receivers you have. On this play, I have three receivers, but there's really only two box defenders, not including the linebacker who is potentially on a blitz. So I really only have to watch that player there to decide whether I want to run it or throw it out to the RPO bubble. And you can see here, I have plenty of blocking to take up these receivers as we get a very easy catch and run. And that's because the defense was in a zone coverage, which should be a very easy read. On this next play, you can see now we have an extra defender as we have a cornerback in front of every receiver on the field. And that's because my opponent is in a man coverage. Man coverages are going to stop these plays as often the receiver will drop down and knock the ball out or even make an interception from time to time. 
But if you're not really sure, one of the easier ways to do it is just watch the defender in front of the receiver that's going to be catching the ball. If he doesn't drop in the direction of the receiver, you can simply throw it out every single time and then just try to make somebody miss and have a very easy catch and run for as big of a play as you can get. Next up, I'm going to go over blocking. This year, EA put in a really good addition to the pass protection system with a full slide and a half slide option. So no matter what blitz your opponent is sending, you can mess with these until you find a way to pick up the blitz. Whether they're sending cornerbacks, linebackers, you name it, you can always go through this until you figure it out but if your opponent is sending a man zero blitz you're gonna have to block the running back as well but there's more than one way to do this if you simply just block the running back he will help out and will typically pick up the defender that's blitzing but at the same time he's gonna also make his defender that was covering him turn to a deep coverage defender often double teaming routes and making it harder to pass downfield I also find that simply putting the running back in a pass block doesn't work too great either as it'll often get lost and let people run right past them so the best way to do this and have the best of both worlds is by putting the running back on a block and release and then also assigning him a pass block lane by sliding protection until he's picking up the blitzer doing this will make sure that he picks up the blitz but it will also make sure that the defender covering him will spend the entire play hovering around the line of scrimmage as a check and release is technically a route so the defender assigned to him will typically hang out around the line of scrimmage waiting for a check and release that will never happen next up i'm gonna go over another new feature that was added to the custom stem system this is something that has infinite amounts of usage whether you're setting up one play touchdowns or whether you're just trying to beat coverages zone drop depths you name it this is something that you should be using on just about every single pass play as it's a natural counter to people that try to set their zone drop depths meaning that i could really set these wide receiver depths to whatever i want but at the end of the day one of the better ways to do it is by shortening them whether it's zone coverage or man coverage shortening the route will help the receiver get open very quickly a lot of the time to access this all you have to do is select the receiver for a hot route and then hold the lb button while hitting up or down on the left stick and now you'll notice that even though we have a man zero blitz this receiver is going to get open underneath that very quickly so we have a lot of things that we can do with this next i'm going to go over a glitch that you can do with the custom stem called the speed boost glitch which can be especially effective when it comes to going against things like man zero blitz all you really need is something as simple as a post or a corner route and it'll get open very quickly if you do something as simple as custom stemming that receiver up or down and then also putting that same receiver on a smart route and you'll notice how it completely breaks the route and will also give the receiver a speed boost coming off the line of scrimmage doing this with a lot of routes will give the receiver a speed boost coming off the line and you'll notice against things like man zero blitz he'll get open right away for a very easy catch on one play touchdown as he crosses the field and you can see the speed boost he gets off the line of scrimmage as well as the benefit of the shorter route I made a full breakdown explaining more routes you can do this with. So if you want to see more, I'll have links in the description as well as on screen at the end of the video. So stick around for that. Next up, we're going to go over some things you can do on defense, starting with another setting that you should change the second you pick up Madden 25. If you haven't done this, go down to the section called Gameplay Helpers and turn your defensive heat seeker assist on, as this will allow user controlled defenders to be steered towards the ball carrier more when attempting to run or dive into them. You can also change the heat seeker window size from 100% all the way up to 200% as this is going to increase the magnetism that your user controlled defender has to being pulled into the ball carrier to make it that much easier to tackle. Once you increase this to 200%, you also want to make sure you're using the breakdown tackle as tapping this repeatedly when close to a running back will suction you in much faster than any other tackle type. As you can see right here, we basically phase through the tackle dummy and that's because the 200% window size is that strong and it will suck you into the ball carrier from distances like this. And if you're also having trouble timing interception or even catching balls on offense tapping the y or triangle button will help with that as well as it removes any timing penalty that's instituted into the game and essentially will allow you to catch every single ball with no timing penalty at all next up when on defense you want to always make sure you're watching the quarterback's cadence as there's only so many designed animations in the game simple things like changing the direction of a run play will result in the quarterback tapping his shoulders to let you know that he's communicating with the running back this is a visual signal that they give to the running back every single time when under center whether in single back i form or any under center formation when it comes to changing a play or changing a hot route they will do the same thing every time as well where they'll essentially turn their head and yell in the direction of the offensive player that they're 
they're assigning a new hot route to. So if they do that, you know they're either changing a play, or if I wanted to put this B receiver on a streak, he's going to turn his head and yell to that receiver. So if you see too many of those adjustments, you know it's a pass play. Now, when the quarterback's not under center like this, if he wants to communicate with the running back once again, this time he will tap his hip. And you'll know that they're not changing the direction of a run play based on the fact that you typically can't change the direction of a run play when in shotgun. So anytime you see that, you know he's just communicating with the running back to put him on some sort of pass block. Then with the receivers, it's going to be the same thing, only instead of turning his head and yelling, he'll basically do this animation where he basically just motions his hand out, which is something that he's going to do in the direction of the receiver that he's putting on a route. As you can see right here, I put the A receiver on a streak, so he did it to the right. Then I put the X receiver on A streak, and he did it to the left, giving you a way which direction he's making his audible. And if he audibles his play, it'll be the exact same thing, where he'll basically just do that generally to let the entire offense know that he's changing the play. Next, I'm going to go over the best run defense in the entire game. If you're having trouble stopping the run, try to use cover four quarters in any formation in the playbook. And that's because these cover four safeties are designed to drop down and play the run as long as you don't guess pass. As you can see here, this safety immediately fills and actually meets the running back at the line of scrimmage, which is a look you get from both safeties on both sides of the field. So if you want to turn your run defense up a notch, make sure you're using cover four quarters. Next, I'm going to go over the best run defense and the best RPO defense, and that's going to be cover four palms as they're both matching coverages that are styled after cover four, but they react very differently. Now, the safeties will react the exact same way, whether it's a run play or a pass play, but what about RPO plays? As you'll notice, this particular defender here will react very differently based off of whether you call cover four quarters like I just did or cover four palms. As you'll notice, once this play starts, the bubble screen will not be defended as this defender would basically just stand there and wait and do nothing. There is an adjustment I can make to make him go after that receiver simply by hitting the RB or the R1 button and up on the right stick to guess pass. And you'll notice now he'll play that bubble screen much tighter as he drops down and tries to take that away even though he broke the tackle, but it was still much better defense. And this is because RPOs are technically pass plays, but if you were to hand it off to the running back, guessing pass also makes your run defense much worse. So if you want the best of both worlds, all you have to do is choose cover four palms over cover four quarters, as this defense is programmed to do that automatically. So I don't have to guess pass, meaning that this defender will go after this receiver every single time with me doing nothing at all. And you'll notice that the safeties are still dropping down to play the run as well, making this the best RPO defense as you have the best of both worlds. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the video there. If you guys wanna see more tip videos that I've made about Madden 25, I'll have them popping up on screen. And until next time, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just wanna show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.